Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey friends, can you imagine how you'd feel living the life you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love, with people you love, in places you love, and all the while creating something of real value for others. It's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you, it's a very happy life. So can Celia Slater, and she's my guest star for today. Hey, Celia, welcome to the Something Significant Show. Thank you, Matt. It's so great to be here. I really appreciate the invitation to visit and be a part of your, your community. Ah, wonderful. So just tell our audience, what are you doing these days to leave your mark of significance on the world? Well, let's see. Um, I am married to a interim um, coach for the Orlando Pride, Becky Burley. We have four dogs. So that's where I start with my significance. Um, and then my, my, some of my life's work or my service, my ministry pretty much is around developing coaches of all sports. So I work with um, coaches through our online coach development academy. And so we have three workbooks that those courses are based on. And then we just build video content and other resources around those three workbooks. Um, I also mentor coaches. So I work with coaches one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then I we also run like workshops with universities, uh, club team organizations, uh, corporate people. So we do those types of things. Um, so those are pretty much the main things right now that I'm contributing um, to some meaningful work. That sounds really good. Okay, so I'd like our audience to get to know you through what I call the prism of our happy formula. Okay. The, the formula is capacity plus purpose equals happy. So let's start with the first element. What are your practices for building personal capacity, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional? In other words, Celia, what do you do to create the capacity you need to take good care of yourself and your loved ones and your dogs and mm -hmm. still have plenty left over to give to others? Oh, that's a great question. I, I would say that my journey around this entire being on this planet this time has about, been about self-acceptance and confidence. Mm. And so, so much of my practices have been around how do I build those skill sets um, and um, pay attention and build that mindfulness muscle to where I'm really paying attention to my emotions and my thoughts. And so I would say I probably put the most of my time into that practice um, that really builds my capacity because what I found is doing that has really helped me develop um, my own self-empathy, my own self-compassion. And so that's probably where I put the most, I probably should put a little bit more into the physical, <laughs> but I do, um, I do like to exercise. I like to walk, hike, ride my bike, <clears throat> but I would say, you know, my meditation practices, my journaling, um, my mindfulness practice, which, you know, to me is just an extension of that meditation, um, is just really getting, just growing and growing in that aspect, I think really keeps me grounded and at peace more and more. So it's interesting. You, you've touched on, on something that I've been discovering lately. There, there are different types of energy and I, I put them into earthly energy and spiritual energy. Right. Earthly energy is finite. If you build your muscles up and then you use them, you have to rest them. Or if you, if you donate $100 to a, to a charity, you deplete your bank account, you have to replenish it. If, right. Whatever you use, you have to replenish. Your mind, your, your mental energy. You have a hard, mm -hmm. tough negotiation or, or coaching or, or game, and you're exhausted, you need to rest. Yes. But, but spiritual energy is infinite. The mm -hmm. more you use it, the less, the more you have. Yeah, yeah. So in a way, if you are if you are really dialed in in spirit, it compensates as an athlete, you know how compensation works. It compensates right. for a lot of earthly weaknesses and you don't need as much of that energy as other people need. Yeah. You, you agree? 
Yeah, I do. I definitely agree with that. And I think, you know, there's, there's that whole sense of, you know, when you give, you receive. And so I think with the whole giving and service aspect, just like you're saying, it it just kind of magnifies. It's like the whole fishes and loaves concept, right? Just kind of, it kind of grows. So I definitely think I've been in phases of my life that have been in much different (laughs) place, but Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I'm going to be 60 this year. So you definitely have a new perspective. Um, You know, I I was earlier reading about uh, Carl Jung's um, four stages of life, you know, the athlete phase and the warrior phase, and then the statement phase, and then the spirit phase. And I certainly feel like I'm between the statement and spirit phase, you know, moving into that place where you start to realize that that's really why you're here. It has nothing to do with any other thing, you know? So I just, I just turned 60 also. And I recently wrote a a post reaching 60 unscathed. (laughs) I don't know how you did that unscathed, but uh, that's impressive. (laughs) Then the first, the first sentence of the post is, well, in truth, I'm a little bit, a little scathed. I (laughs) talked about the operations I've had and some of the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The point, but the point is you, I believe, especially, I like how you put it with Carl Jung's four levels, you can, you can live a life that gets better and better every day, every day until the rest of your, for your whole life. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of mindset. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you can do everything physically that you might be able to do at 60 than you, when you're 20. But there's so many more things that you have with wisdom and with knowledge and experience and, and that you could never have dealt with it as a 20 year old. So yeah, for sure. Uh, there's that there's just nothing but truth in that statement. <laughs> <laughs> so before moving on to purpose, let's talk about one of my favorite words, Kaizen. It's a Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. As a personal practice, it means there's always something you can do better tomorrow than you did today. And I love it because it keeps me moving forward in some way every single day. So Celia, how do you apply Kaizen, that concept, to improve your personal capacity to continuously become more so you can continuously give more? Hmm. Well, I feel like a lot of what you were talking about with the capacity question to me really flows into this question because my, my aspect and my view all comes from within outward. You know, like when we talk to our coaches, we talk to them about begin within. Mm -hmm. So we have that whole philosophy around, if you want to win, you got to begin within. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is just so much of the self-awareness, self-knowledge. Um, I, I would not say that I'm a highly driven person to conquer the world and, you know, do all those things every day. I got to be 1% better. I don't, I don't really look at it that way. I, I feel like I look at it like, how can I, how can I love myself better today? How can I be more gentle with myself and others today? How can I, um, so for me, that Kaizen concept is really about my journey and my self-exploration because in that is what creates a new lens for me when I'm, when I see other people what they're experiencing or, or if they say something hurtful to me, or if they, you know, how I interact with people, it it softens me. And I think that to me is where I want to incrementally constantly be getting better. Now that doesn't mean I, I definitely listen to podcasts. I read books. I, you know, I, I love listening to other experts, having, um, deep conversations with other people, always want to grow and learn, you know, so learning to me is a very high value. Um, But it's mostly how I learn through relationships that Mm -hmm. um, really, really um, lights me up because, you know, people to me and our relationships are the reason we're here. And I I look at it and I go, it's like uh, Covey has the concept of begin with the end in mind. And I know he was talking about setting a goal when you're starting to manage a group or build a group. But to me, like I begin with the end in mind thinking my, what am I going to be thinking about in the last five minutes of my life? If I have the capacity to 
think about that. I'm not going to think be thinking about, you know, how much money did I have, the house. I'm going to be thinking about the people in my life and the relationships that I had and and hopefully not any regrets, but um, mainly the love and the people in my life. Ah, beautiful. All right. Well, let's let's look now at the second element of the happy formula. And in my book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I explore how major tri- life transformations and discovery of purpose often come from devastation, addictions, disease, death, disasters, some big crisis shakes your life. But I've been fortunate and used a happier way and discovered my purpose through inspiration. So mm-hmm. how about you, Celia? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis mm-hmm. or some inspiration that revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live on this planet? Well, I kind of have a funny story about that. I, I went to Ianla Van Zant's a retreat. Um, she's a author. She has a show, I think, on Oprah's channel now. And it was called Wonder Woman Weekend. And, and I was really searching for my purpose. Like I was just, I was younger. I was, I probably was in my, what is it? Like mid to late four, uh, mid to late thirties when I went on this retreat. Okay. So I was really determined. I'm going to find this life purpose, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote what, that in my application. What were you doing at the time? I was coaching college basketball. Okay. And, but I knew that wasn't what I wanted to do forever. It was kind of like I did it because I had played basketball and it was the thing I knew the best. And so basically it's, it was really interesting. So when I walked into this building, you stick your hand into a bucket and they have all of these um, attributes and that was going to be your name for the weekend. Hmm. And out of all of those things I pulled out, my name was purpose. Huh. So my name became purpose for the weekend. So you can wow. call it whatever you want, synchronicity, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, from there, I started a program called play with purpose that then created, then we, that's how we kind of went down the path into coach development. So that's a whole nother story. But the reason I'm sharing that with you is because I wasn't a great coach and I made a lot of mistakes. And so I think with what I'm doing right now with my purpose is really around chain, taking a little bit of a wound, like you're saying, and turning it into a gift. Mm. And so it's kind of like, well, I didn't have training as a coach. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know myself enough. Like my, my self-awareness was very low. And um, I think now that's why I want to try to help younger coaches um, and recognize how your life story plays out when you're coaching, how, Mm. you know, you're repeating patterns, how you, how is your emotional intelligence, you know, all the things that would have made me such a better coach if I had known them. Mm. And so I think that's really kind of put me on this path of purpose. Um, And and I'm, I really, I I love it. It's very meaningful work for me. I, I definitely enjoy it. And I also can feel, you know, I don't know what's going to be kind of next, but I really do enjoy what I'm doing right now. What do you think if so if you had gone to Wonder Woman weekend and you had pulled out success? <laughs> what do you think? I don't, I, don't I, I guess I would have been OK with that. I mean, it would have been my name for the weekend. So do you think I, it would have changed the trajectory of your life. Do you think that that weekend really was an inflection point for you? I do in a way that not only was that kind of weird that purpose was the thing that I pulled out. Yeah. It was also, you know, I met some people on that retreat weekend when I shared my vision for the work that I wanted to do, they were able to help me make that happen. You know, I, I am a true visionary entrepreneur, visionary who needs details people to help them make things happen. You know, um, I def, I I have a good idea about every half hour, so (laughs) I need people to reel me back in. And, you know, so I think that's, that's what it really kind of changed the trajectory between the people and then the inspiration that I got that weekend. And so, and how long from that weekend until you quit coaching and made a career change? Oh, that's a really good question. I think, I'm really bad at this, but I would say within the next two to three years, I think I got out of coaching and then took a concept to the NCAA to start the NCAA Women Coaches Academy. 
And that's just kind of where I started down the coach development path. Okay. I love coaching. I had two years after college uh, where I got to coach uh, junior varsity football. And I was going to try out for the pros at the same time. So I was an athlete and a coach at the same time. It was so fun. And my, my JV team at one point, football has 11 players. We had 13 players on the team. Oh my so, goodness. <laughs> so I was on the sideline with my assistant coach and two other guys. <laughs> That's awesome. That's like hoping that nobody gets, nobody hurt. gets hurt. Right. <laughs> I've, when I was a younger coach too, Matt, uh, I had to scrimmage with my teams too. We only had like seven people, you know? So I, I, I like, tell you, I, I quarterbacked that whole year and it was uh-huh. the first time I was 22, 23 years old. And I thought, you know what? I think I could have been a quarterback. <laughs> I got, I got really good at throwing that ball. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. So, Let's take a commercial break because I want to tell everyone about three things. An online course that helps people discover their purpose Mm -hmm. and then design their life around it and how they can save a hundred bucks on the enrollment fee. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made for good people. That's why I love Happy Living's online e-course. It's an eight week long deep dive into you and the inspired life you want to live. The life you were put here on this earth to live. The one that you and only you can live. Eight weeks of lectures and ideas and topics and supporting materials and powerful self-improvement tools. All designed for you all designed to help you create the tools and the power and the confidence you need to discover your purpose and to discover the life you were meant to live and to feel incredibly inspired and motivated to decide you will live your life to its fullest. It's all designed to help you create the unique and distinct philosophy of you and your inspired life. Go to happyliving.com, select our e-course, and save a hundred bucks with promo code WITV7. And for every enrollment, I'll donate another hundred bucks to WITV7. For $300 in about 30 hours, I promise you'll never, ever be the same again. And we're back, and this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm Matt Gersper. Hey friends, we created our e-course just for you, to help you create the tools you need to become self-inspired and to achieve your unique greatness on your own terms and to leave your very own mark of significance on the world. In just eight weeks, we could be celebrating a new you and your inspired life. But for now, let's get back to my guest star, Celia Slater. Celia, I recently read an article called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. It was on LiveScience.com. And it seems that the act of giving itself can be a gateway to discovering your reason for being on this planet. It says compelling scientific data supports the notion that giving one's time, talents, and treasures is a powerful pathway to discovering purpose, transcending difficulties, and finding fulfillment, and meaning in life. So I went ahead and updated the formula. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Celia? From your life experience, has giving your time, your talents, and treasures been a powerful pathway for discovering your purpose and transcending difficulties that you've faced and for bringing about fulfillment and meaning into your life? Definitely. Like, I I think that when it comes to what I've been giving in my work, like so much of it has been centered around um, how do I make their path easier? So I told you about Play With Purpose. Mm -hmm. So that program was all around my transition to college athletics. So I went, I played high school basketball, three, I mean, three different sports in high school, was really good basketball player, got a scholarship to Clemson, went there to play basketball, 
for two years, but I was really young. I was emotionally immature. I struggled with the transition and I did great in high school. I was a four, a three-time state champion. I mean, I was just, you know, we had this, I just had this magnificent career. And so I, that was where I started was I really wanted to help athletes make a better and easier transition to college and give them some self-awareness tools to do that. And then we just kind of realized that coaches needed it because they're sitting in the back of the room going, man, I need this stuff. So I think in that giving and in that service, I think there's something in us, I feel like that we connect and it's like what my friend Jonathan Fields calls, you know, you have that spark Mm -hmm. and something in you sparks you. And when you give and then that spark becomes a flame and then becomes like, a, you know, a big fire inside of you, that that's that's kind of what I'm always searching for in any type of like you, you use the word purpose. Um, I, for me, it's meaningful work. Mm-hmm. Um, and that could be, you know, you could be a mom of five kids and that's meaningful work. That mm-hmm. could be your purpose. And I think sometimes people get overwhelmed with that word a little bit just because they think it has to be something so huge and out yeah. there and, but it really doesn't. It's no. really about what, what gives your life, what makes you feel meaning, what makes you feel like you're a contributor, what makes you feel like yep. you're, you're, you're loving the people around you. I don't know. But so for me, it was just like, I just kept moving towards that. What, what was, what was meaningful for me, but at my younger life, I'll be real honest. Like when I was younger, I was really trying to heal myself by doing this work without really doing the healing. So I was doing it because something inside of me really hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was giving, but, and it was helping me heal, but I still had some other stuff that I had to look at that was really going to ultimately be the, you know, what was going to help that heal. Yeah. But I just feel like that's definitely um, the doing versus the saying, the action versus the, the words, mm-hmm. your behaviors, you know, they always tell us what we value. And, and so I'm always trying to move towards the things that I say I value and feel yep. in my heart that I value. Yeah, that's well said. And, and I like the, the idea of purpose or, or meaning. It can be it could be leading a family. Mm-hmm. It could be leading a corporation. It could be leading a country. It could be being a janitor or a piano player or an artist. It doesn't make any difference. But when you discover what it is for you, that's when your life gets better and yeah. your life gets easier and happier mm-hmm. and everything works. Right. Right. But I think the big key though, with that Matt too, is it has to be what you decide is right for you. Like I know a lot of people are always looking for purpose or meaning around what's the approval of others. Right. What will other people think, you know, and that's just like a little gerbil on that round thing. Yeah. You're, you're just going to go nowhere and, but be working. Yeah. And so I think it's, it, that's a really important piece because I think young, when I was younger and say the athlete or the warrior phase of Carl Jung's archetypes, I would say I was really more concerned about, what was the world thinking of me? What, how did they perceive me? Yeah. You know, and the I world, think the world can't have your purpose, right? right? It has to come right. from inside you. Yeah. yeah. Right. One of my favorite quotes is other people's opinion of you is none of your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So that's the science and I agree with it. And I've experienced how the real magic of life comes from that fourth element of significance, doing work that creates value for others. The magic comes not from getting more, but from giving more, Mm -hmm. but it's not just the giving that's magical. What I've been learning is it's when you're giving from living in your purpose, that's where the magic is. Mm -hmm. So tell us, Celia, how does it make you feel when you're giving to others, doing the work that you were put on this planet to do, and a client says, and this is a quote, Celia Slater promotes individual growth by encouraging open, honest, Let's get real dialogue. The individual growth that has taken place in my own personal life has greatly benefited me and the, per- and the people I work with on a daily basis. I'm confident that Celia's Camp Elevate 
will impact your life too. Not coach, not your coaching, mm -hmm. but your life too. And that you'll leave challenged to become a better coach and a better person for your athletes. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you? Well, I mean, I, I mean that, yeah, that feels good on my heart, you know, to know that we're touching some people's lives like that. And I think, I think that when we talk about these types of things and you're talking about living your purpose and how does that light us up? It's like kind of a little bit to me tied to that life story. And, and what I mean by that is like, I, I do this thing with our teams around our life story bags. And I, and I take, I, I bring in a bag and it has all these items in it. And I start pulling them out and I, and I use them to symbolize different things that have happened in my life, people in my life. And so at the end, so I'll have all these things out on the table. Like my father was an airline pilot. So I'll put an airplane, you know, my mom was born in Egypt. So I put a little pyramid, you know, I put an athletic bra because I was an athlete, a whistle because I was a coach. So you get the idea. Mm -hmm. So at the end, you know, I go, wait a minute, there's something else in this bag. And I pull out a dumbbell. And I say, this too is a part of my story. And it's something that I've been carrying most of my life. And I've worked really hard. I said, the good news is this 10 pound dumbbell used to be 60 pounds when I was 20. And I've worked really hard to shrink the weight of that dumbbell. Hmm. And I think, and so I always tell them, I said, this is the thing, the lighter your story bag, the brighter your light. And so we want their light to be as bright as possible. And, and I always share with them, you know, all of us, when you're talking about purpose and meaningful lives is, is understanding that kind of ties into what you're saying about purpose is that the world needs all of our lights right now. So it needs, and your, you know, your light is unique. Mine is unique. Yeah. Everyone has that unique light yeah. and to really own that light and to feel good about that light. Some of us, all of us have to kind of let go of some of those things that are weighing us down from the past 100%. or that, that have really hurt us that have, that are holding us back. And I think that's, that to me is what's going to move me into this space of giving within my purpose because, and because, you know, now I can see it so clearly when I meet and I work with a coach, you know, I could, I could see it so clearly. I know there's something and that's why I like, to get to know them on a deeper level. I always tell them like, look, we're not, you don't come to our, the, our workshops to sit in the room, like a bump on a pickle. You are going to be, this is going to be deep. You know, we're not. And I love to do things that really do inspire them. You know, we all need some inspiration in our lives every so often. And, and as a coach or as a teacher or a, um, a leader of any kind, you're constantly giving, you're constantly, you know, serving, giving, you know, so sometimes it's nice to recharge those batteries. Yeah, I like it. And, you know, you take your 60 pound dumbbell and you get it down to 10 and you get it down to five. The, the lighter that is, the more energy you have to and time you have to be in your purpose. And the more time you're in your purpose, the more capacity you have to give. Exactly. And so it's purpose and giving makes this great, big, happy circle. Giving your time and talents and treasures, they say, is a pathway powerful pathway to finding your purpose and giving from living in your purpose brings profound joy into your life. So giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. And Celia, that's the exponential power of the happy formula. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals happy to the third power. And that's really, truly, deeply happy. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that sound about right to you? Yeah. No, I, I think that, yeah, I definitely... I definitely can see that formula. Yeah. Very yep. good. Definitely. Very good. Okay, let's wrap, let's wrap things up with a lightning round. I love reading some of my favorite quotes to you and then have you respond telling us first thing comes to your mind, um, what it means to you. Okay. So the first one is from John Wooden. You may know of John Wooden. I've met John Wooden. I actually <laughs> have. Him? Oh, I went to my. I went to his basketball camp when I was 14. Oh, what a what a dude. Uh, John Wooden says sports don't build character, they reveal it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's very true. I think like um, life doesn't build character, life reveals it. You know, you can apply that to any aspect if you're an athlete or not. Um, And that's the thing is like, again, in our society, we don't teach people how to build their character. We're more interested in math and science and English. We're not interested in human development as a people. And I think that we have to understand that when light, when sports does reveal character, like, and I know John Wooden would believe, would agree with this. A part of it in our job is to facilitate and to show them a different way if that character revealed is below a certain standard, Mm -hmm. you know? And so how do we help them move above that line, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But I definitely, I do think that's true. It's like Wayne Dyer used to say, you know, what, what do you get when you squeeze an orange, you know? you get orange juice. Mm -hmm. What happens when you get squeezed? What Mm -hmm. comes out? Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of like a, you know, a good way to think about, you know, that that's that whole character being revealed piece. Yeah, very good. This is from Brene Brown. Vulnerability is our most accurate form of courage. I I definitely, you know, it's so funny because I always tell our coaches, I'm like Brene, the fan, I'm president of the Brene Brown fan club. Um, and that her, her talk or Ted talk has been watched over 35 million times. And I think I'm responsible for at least 3 million. (laughs) Um, so yeah, no, I definitely believe that. And one of the things I'll say is in our programming, you know, everybody has their superpower, you know, regardless. And, And I think, And I've been told this, that one of my superpowers is to be able to make people feel safe quickly, like in a group and in a group setting, you know, I can be, it's just because people feel my authenticity and my genuineness. And I think they feel safe. And that's really important because when we're doing the deep work we're doing around, you know, are you a coach, you know, the person is greater than the coach, just kind of how do we get into the, you know, crack those people open a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we, we talk about this concept of vulnerability and it was funny because you'll, you'll like this, Matt, because some people told me when I started working with male and female coaches, they were telling me, oh, you'll never, the guys will never like that kumbaya stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to tell you the first person who cried in one of our circles <laughs> was a guy. And, and, and ironically enough, yeah. it was because he was sharing, we were talking about Brene Brown. We had just watched her Ted talk. And he was sharing how Brene Brown saved his marriage as a coach. Wow. Wow. And he was so emotional about it. And it was, I cry at emotion. I don't cry. You you can't, you know, bad stuff can't make me cry, but if you get my emotion going, I'm like a baby. Yeah. Yeah, for (laughs) sure. So I, I I think that vulnerability is definitely a sign of courage. And I am, unfortunately we do look too much at it as a weakness. Very good. So last one from Goff. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Well, you know, you're speaking to the heart of an entrepreneur with that quote. You know, it's, you know, I think that's kind of been my life story. Like I've, I've dreamt, I've dreamt about play with purpose, found the people and the resources to make that happen. The Women Coaches Academy, now True North Sports. Um, and I don't know what's next, but um, I think the only thing I would add to that is just know you can't do it alone. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, find the people mm-hmm. that that'll help you support you um, to make that dream happen. Yep. Good advice. OK, and now, folks, you know the drill. If you can hear my voice and you are inspired by today's show with Celia Slater, Please share the love with our magnificent broadcast team and donate what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Celia, I just love your mantra. If you want to win, you must begin from within. And I admire your mission that challenges coaches to find their true north and coach from that place, that most authentic place that lies within them. Coaching from their true, authentic, inspired selves, living and breathing and coaching in their purpose from their heart. And I'm really grateful that you've shared your inspiring and authentic self on our show today. 
Would you take a minute or two and share any parting remarks that you'd like to leave with our audience? Yeah, I, I would like to, to say to everybody that if you want to get involved with any of our programs, you know, please just go to truenorthsports.net. We're starting a coach development academy, managing yourself on September 14th. And we'll send you all the information for the show notes for that. Um, we're going to offer a discount for this listening group. And, um, but also, you know, I just want to say to everybody, be gentle and kind to yourself. You know, the other quote that I really love is, um, be kind for everybody is fighting a hard battle. And so I think that that's so true. So let's be gentle with each other. Our world needs kindness and empathy right now, for sure. For sure. Wonderful. Thank you, Celia. I also want to thank WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guests like Celia and reaching folks just like you ready to create your own extraordinary lives. A special thank you to our sponsors, the philosophy of you and your inspired life and happy living. Remember, I'll donate 100 bucks for each and every enrollment using promo code WITV7. So tell all your friends too. go to happyliving.com, select our e-course and enroll together as a group. Most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Celia Slater. Find her, friend her, download her Braving Trust Worksheet that shows the seven elements of trust that I, and identifies which ones you personally struggle with. And listen to our podcast too. It's called Coaches on the Rise. It's all available at truenorthsports.net. That's all one word, True North Sport, sports, <laughs> N-E-T. And, and for many of you dear friends, I love you and I want you to be happy. I want you to live your life to its fullest, to believe as I do that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. I hope we've left you feeling motivated and super confident and really bold too, and ready to take action to start discovering your unique and distinct reason for being on this planet, because that's where you're going to make your mark of significance on the world, and the world is waiting to hear from you. Till next time. I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show. And we're out. <laughs>